Welcome back to the 2016 Causeway Challenge here in Johor Bahru, Malaysia. Jesse Matthews here alongside Chris May as we bring to you the next round of coverage here. We have got familiar faces on board one. We've got Mark Nyman to start, I believe, with Nadja Richards on the right. Mark won his last match versus Dave Weekend, as I understand it. That's correct. So uh, they're going to be playing each other uh, at least once or twice. Uh, so I, ha I have a feeling that if this is a lagged pairing in the next round, uh, we're going to see two games in a row between these guys. Mm. I don't even know <laughs> what the round is anymore because mm. we see so many repeats, so thank you for those who are saying so. I've lost track of the head-to-head -head between these guys over this, this tournament. This must be at least their fourth match now, if not their fifth. I think their fifth. Nigel was saying, I was talking to Nigel on the break here, mm -hmm. off the table, and he said they played at least twice off of the top table. Uh, and wow. they played twice on the top table, so I believe this is perhaps their fifth matchup. Pretty amazing. I'm just clicking through the mock scorecard now. So I see that they played in round five, round 13, round 16, round 19, round 20. So this is indeed their sixth meet of the tournament. So they have now played the most times. Uh, so before this, it was Jesse and, and uh, Nigel. Mark's only won one of those games. Yeah. So an idol's four and one against Mark. Taken a number of heavy baits as well. So with an opening rack of triple E N O R T, Mark has opted to play E E. A lot of people would change those two E's rather than play them. Yeah, I think I would be inclined to do the same. But no harm, no foul, and he's pulled a blank, so Let's hope this is the start of the big, uh, the big comeback because Nigel needs to come back to this field. It's going to be a competitive tournament, mm. so I think um, unbiased though we are, a win for Mark would be nice here. Yeah, Mark has at least got concrete with the C and the double letter score on the next turn, assuming it's not obstructed. But you can expect from Nigel it likely will be. Well, Nigel knows very well what EE is about. Mm -hmm. So as we. So with Chalapat, you know, he had no hesitation in making the most defensive play that he could find. But his vowels are not conducive to making a very defensive play here. Um, you know, he can't very easily parallel EE with those two vowels. No. He can play something like Wim, but that keeps VU, so he probably doesn't want to. So he tries to seek the V out and uh, basically make sure that if Mark does have a bingo, it scores very few points. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he's kept more or less the most reasonable core. He could have played Vom, but that would have taken an O-hook. That's probably why he kept the inferior belt. Yeah. Um. Plus, with Lim on the top, there's the possibility of hooking with Climb, which Mark would have been able to do very nicely. So ah, indeed, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vim uh, removes some of the worst comeback options. No, I think it really is the UV combo that knocks out yeah. Lim as a possibility. So he had a, uh, basically some ugly options there, Nigel, and uh, tried to play the most defensively that he could. And, you know, playing defense from move one is something that some players uh, o overlook the importance of. Mm -hmm. I remember hearing a comment in the playing room at one of the World Championship Finals. You know, why would I play defensively from the first turn? Well, why not? because you're inferring <laughs> from what your opponent's doing. You don't want to go down an early bingo. Yeah. Um, and the reality after an EE play is that you are probably going to go down a uh, bonus after but the idea is to control how much they score doing so in the process. I actually don't hate the um, the 4.2 vowel opening as much as some players do. Some players think it gives away unnecessary balancing, scoring, counterplay to the opponent, but um, it can create headaches as well if the opponent has the sort of rack that Nigel did. Mm. I wonder right. if there's a 9 3 yeah. amp. You can that night, uh, Mark's looking for one. Some would argue uh, by changing the two vowels, as uh, some experts would prefer to do, that you leave the option for a huge score that doubles on the opening uh, center star plus the double letter score. There's certainly some uh, arguments both ways for uh, playing versus exchanging in such a situation. Well, four points is four points, you know. Yeah, it's better than zero, which is what you get by changing. So there are some nines through the E, or two or two nines anyway. None reaches the triple. There's the lovely Con Temper, which is very cool. Mm. And 
that's um, well within the grasp of a player like Mark, but it's not the best player. He goes for concert. Or does he? I'm just waiting for confirmation on that play. Convert. Convert. Okay. Slightly more defensive because concert, of course, takes the I and the O back hook. Because convert only takes the S. So Nigel has Bulbous for a nice rack clearer, but he probably won't want to uh, use his ass on that a bingo down. Something more uh, sane in order. He'd love to play Boo Boo, yeah, but I don't think it goes, does it? I'm not seeing any spot for Boo Boo. I was thinking something similar. Cubeb is one of those fun words that never comes up, but it's not mm. the right play here for sure. Yeah, I agree with that. Looks like Nigel's made his choice pretty fast. To me, it's not a not a clear position, so I'm curious to see what he's done. Very simple bun, bun for ten. Mm. Well, it's um, in blues. Yeah, blues. <laughs> There's something to be said for that. I mean, BL has excellent two-tile synergy. That's one of the best two-consonant mm. um, synergy tiles. The U sort of hurts it, but the E really, really helps it. And of course, the S is great for uh, a convert's bingo. So maybe there are um, more seventh-letter words from that leave than it might um, at first glance seem. He's got bustles on his rack, I think. There was a Y being typed before, but it's been taken away, so it looks like bustles is what he has. And stubbles through that B. Yeah, nice pickup. That's a backup play. Yeah, so Nigel clearly felt that the B was a helpful tile in that leave, um, given the L, E, and S alongside it. And even worth neutralizing the, the U mm. to keep that. Sorry, that didn't make sense, my comment. Um, the fact that there was a U in the leave wasn't really hurt. Yeah. Mark is probably tempted by Zonda and Ab to go down here for a lot of points. Even though Wu is an awful leave, it's still lots of points to turn down. There's no good for Waz. Oh, there is somewhere okay for Waz. J8, hooking the W onto the EE. W oh, yeah. Is that. Actually, wait, that does score a lot. So. CSW15. Yeah, I'll take that back. Waz and U are better. Well, as the defending player, I'd say Waz was better than Zonda, especially given the WU yeah. keep is a, kind of a yeah. high risk of ruin. Um, yeah, now that you pointed out was that is the better one. It's about the first. Worse. That's about the first play I've actually found. Like there in the whole go. in the whole three days, I think. <laughs> that's forty one for was. I'm pretty proud. Pretty nice. Three letter words. You got to start somewhere. <laughs> yeah, so that's forty one. Zondo would be fifty four, but the improved lead after was is enough to uh, sacrifice the points. I think. Plus, Zondo offers lots back with the Z and the. Yeah. Triple line up there. It was is actually going to force Nigel to take his face value bingo. Yeah, if I'm not be. mistaken. Oh well, yeah, that's true. Craig does point out uh, Mark missed uh, a number of uh, the brand new threes in Lille. We noticed that several times. Uh -huh, okay. So I would think though, after he's reviewed his game from uh, from Worlds, that he would have studied up on those uh, to avoid making similar mistakes again. It's Although, no, he, it looks like he's playing in the top of the bottom of for Zonda. It's not just the words themselves, it's also the hooks. We were saying this on yeah. day one. You need to study the hooks separately. So... Yeah, he has, has gone for Zonda in the end. You know, it's conceivable that that's a deliberate decision, having reviewed it against was, but my suspicion is that it's an omission, mm. and that he missed the play. Because you know, that's the sort of play Nigel would not make. He does not like saddling himself with... Um, a risky board position and yeah. keeping WU, you know, you may have to change. And you're giving your opponent who's 100 down a free shot at balancing with a Z for 40 points and then getting a bingo. Yeah. That's a good way to um, be facing the level position. So I think um, a little bit of an inaccuracy from Mark there.
And for those of you watching in the feed, uh, can we just get some feedback on the sound? Uh, we are still aware that there is the buzz in the room in the background, but uh, is there anything besides that ambient noise that you are hearing? Is our volume okay? Please let us know. So Nigel has uh, sublets as well as bustles, and these other options out bless. And he's gone for the... Uh, sublets. Yeah, he's gone for the development of the uh, bottom right as opposed to the converts position which opens um, the triple line and probably allows a, a bit too much counterplay from Mark. He's gone for the slightly lower scoring play. Meanwhile, uh, looking for anything Mark can play to use that Z and I'm not seeing it. Actually, I take that back. Sublets may uh, actually be equally scoring, if not better, without having done the maths. So, uh, yeah, no arguments with what Nigel does there as the trailer player. Oh, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, the DEGPY -E is not a great draw, but it's not a terrible draw. But um, yeah. the what the W you leave is what cripples it. Yeah. And it means that he, he can't take advantage of the spots on the board, really. Or at least not the one he'd like to. So this is where I'm looking to see, okay, how can I... Uh declutter my rack as much as possible. He could make a number of plays uh, hooking the ab to make a buy and then say pudgy or wedgy or something like this, uh, but it still leaves the Z vulnerable. It uh, doesn't really leave anything great for the either way, but how do you, Chris, when you look at these positions for prioritizing leave and scoring, well, what do you think when looking at these? Well, my priority would be uh getting my rack back to a state where I actually have some flexibility in terms of developing the position. Uh, having said that, I would be a little worried about the Z and being back to neutral you know, after Nigel's next play. So my, I, I'd really be looking very hard at the Z and I'd almost be tempted by a play like was again, uh, just to make sure. But then with the bottom right, the way Nigel's developed it, you know, He's got options all over the board, and he can do what he wants. So maybe it's a case of actually um, going out the rack with something like Pudgy at 6H, and just trusting the board to remain manageable, keeping WE, and uh, hoping that the rack develops favorably with a five-tile pick, and that you'll get something flexible in whatever region of the board Nigel doesn't take. I mean. You know, there's, there's opportunities all over the board, but Nigel can't play everywhere at once. Yeah. So you are going to get something back. So it's, very, it's just very important to have a decent, flexible rack next turn. So if you can't take out the Z with anything good and it looks like you can't, then um, you know, don't worry about it. You can't control what you can't control. Um, question whether there's something decent through the O. I haven't seen it if there is. I can see the, the word ye out. Y E O W, but it doesn't block the Z entirely. It's not, good, play not good enough for the rack, yeah. No, if you're going to play there, it can't just be a pure block. You have to um, have to help yourself as well. Yeah. Wedgie, uh, the plays from F1 are also conceivable. I think they're quite credible. I think my favourite play that I've seen so far is Pudgy at, uh, at 6H, though. Just keeps a little bit of scoreboard pressure on Nigel. He has a random rack, so who knows? And the W is not the worst scoring tile in the world, but it's also far from the best. Marlon Hill is defending Zonda as a play. Um, curious to hear the reasoning behind that, Marlon. Drawing nothing to use uh, was unfortunate. So why Zonda over was, Marlon? Zonda obviously is more volatile and was less so, but uh, besides that, what would be the uh, way of defending Zonda? No surprise to see, to see Mark taking his time on this move. It's, it's very tricky. Slightly self-inflicted, in my opinion.
am I, um, I just have this feeling about the word program, that it, it maybe at some point didn't take an S, am I right about that, or am I completely wrong? Mm. I cannot remember anymore, let's just, uh, have a look and see. Uh, it took an S in CSW12. Yeah, so it's been around for a while. And in CSWA7, okay, fine, forget that. Well, uh, for those watching, if you've got a better candidate play than my suggestion of 6H Pudgy for Mark Nyman, uh, we'd love to hear it. Let us know. As we've been saying throughout this commentary, we're not using Crackle to find plays. We're just calling the game as we see it. And we are only human. Mm -hmm. So please help us find plays. So it looks like he's gone with Pudgy down, as I suggested earlier, possibly to right. limit the options. I do like your placement of Pudgy, certainly, but I understand the uh, so, placement of this. Um, so, I mean, that tells you that he's a bit worried about the opening that he himself created. So mm -hmm. I think there's a mutual inconsistency between those two yeah. plays, which makes me even more sure that he missed was, right? Yeah. Um, uh, McTeebo, to answer your question, uh, after Nigel makes a play like Bun, given how strong a player he is, uh, when you play for that little, it suggests that he has a decent rack. Uh, so playing something like Zonda is like saying, hi, uh, I know you're probably going to bonus, it's not likely to be through the Z, so I'm giving myself something to score with next turn. That's the uh, logic that Marlon's going with when he's defending Zonda, so uh, that's just to answer your question there. It's He wouldn't know that for sure that Nigel has as a bonus, but, um, yeah, that's why. Okay, guys, here's a good spot quiz. Test your eights. How many words are there that would make an eight-letter triple-triple through that Z and P as they're currently placed on the board? Uh, there are, say pair, there are one. There are six solutions in Oxazepam. the CSW lexicon. Jesse Matthews has nailed two of them straight away. Duzepa and Oxazepam. Four more to go. Marzipan. Marzipan is one. Ah, okay, this starts getting harder. <laughs> Nigel's got Binas and Sabines on his rack, so several options. Yep, looking quite nice for his chances of a catch up. Um, so we didn't talk much about Nigel's last play, but uh, he had a, one of those almost bingo racks, A-E-E-I-N-S-W, and that's a classic um, balance, play off the heavy letter, keep the bingo core, there's plenty of floaters on this board, so no need to really worry about the slightly imbalanced three vowel, two consonant mm. leave, which can be a red flag in some middle game positions, but not in this case, with LT and S available, not to mention the P to start with on the top of the board although he took that out with his play. There's also a C on the left. Um, so a very standard play there from Nigel. No mystery there. Uh, Mark Nyman probably would have liked to play Pew himself here. Uh, he's probably feeling a little bit shaky with only a 30-point lead and another two-tile play from Nigel mm. made quite rapidly. Uh, he'd be thinking that Nigel's looking at a bingo and quite rightly too, because Vinas and so Avines, well, Nigel's almost got a guaranteed bingo considering that there's the uh, S and the N column to through mm. with the Nasses as well. Um, so, the, uh, you know, the, my quiz, the words that haven't been said yet are uh, diazepam. Did I not say that? I thought you said oxazepam. Did you say I did. That? I said oxazepam and diazepam. Okay, my apologies. And then there's uh, Rhizopod and Rhizopus. Oh, the Rhizos, I didn't Indeed. see those ones. Indeed. Wouldn't one of those have been nice? Uh, um, question here whether Mark should play equity or play defense. He's gone for equity here, although he's taking out the seven line as well and the double double. So a little defensive uh, icing on the cake for that play. I think that's a nice, a nice looking move there from Mark. Mm -hmm. Although it's not going to prevent, uh, at the very least, Vinasses. That looks like uh, it's all Nigel's got, unless he's got a fancy nine level. Let's 
so while we wait for this exchange, uh, I think the website might not have the most up-to-date standings, so I'm going to give you the top 10 after 21 rounds, that is going into the current game, and then I'm going to type them into the chat as well for reference. So after 21 games, Nigel is the only player with 16, and he has a healthy margin lead as well with an 1181 margin. Mark Nyman is second with 15 wins, he's the only player on 15. So starting to uh, spread out a bit at the top. There are two players going into this round with 14 wins there, Jesse Day and Th Thailand's Tatcha, who uh, is a very strong player that we've uh, mm -hmm. not seen much of in the top group. So he must be uh, on a bit of a winning streak, nice to see him doing well. Dave Wigand has 13.5 and is outright fifth. Uh, then there are three players bunched on 13 wins in 6th, 7th and 8th position. They are David Eldar of Australia, 13 wins in 7.96, and two Thai players, Komon and Cholapat. Then there's a larger group uh, on 12, rounding up the top 10. It's Joanne Craig of Australia New Zealand and Pichai of Thailand, also 12 wins. So four Thai players in the top 10, making a bit of a charge there. Great to see, they're all very strong, so I hope yeah. we can see more, more of them on table one. Uh, so they are top ten uh, as it currently stands. If you uh, would like to ask about the fortunes of another player in the field, type it into the chat and I'll let you know where they're at after 21 rounds. So I'm just going to type the top ten uh, into the chat now. So we're seeing Foen from Mark Nyman keeping P-A-N. Uh, Nigel has a Jong, as has been mentioned, through the N and Vanasses that he's just played to score some easy points. There it goes. Thanks, Joshua. Certainly appreciate your feedback. Uh, can you actually hear us now? You mentioned you had no sound earlier. <laughs> are you on another computer? Is, are you that dedicated to our cause? <laughs> right, so I'm just taking my first look at the board for a little while. Uh, I see Nigel made the obvious Vanessa's and then uh, What's it been since then? Just Foen and... Just Foen from Mark, and then Mike and Jong. Jong had a quick Jong. Ouch. He is at home now with his external sound card. And we see that Mark's right. down to seven minutes of time. Yeah. Aaron Bader points out that Panax scores a whole bunch here. We'll wait to go back to the quackle board so I can see uh, where you're looking at. Sorry, it's a cut away to a different angle. Uh, Panax. Oh, I see. On top of COD. Yeah, nice play. So it's now basically a, a level middle game. 23 points is uh, no real deficit when you're the player to move. And Mark has a nice flexible rack, but um, a quick scan of the board suggests that... Oh, where's this panax? It's oh, it's on going top above of court. Oh, beautiful yeah. play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think we can expect to see that. which will give Mark um, 
a lead that's no more than, let's say, useful. It's not really a buffer, especially with the uh, par re-parallel options that are going to be with available the X, after yeah. PAX, yeah. They may well bail Nigel out of what's otherwise not an ideal kind of rack. Yeah, something like Hesh. Yeah, he, at the, right now he's not got that much on for his H's other than a play across to the 8A triple. Oh, interesting. He's uh, opted for something else. Capitan. Well... Oh, he's giving himself an X setup. He's giving setup. himself an X setup, but that's too cute for me. You almost gotta wonder if Nigel's gonna and play with his H's alongside it. Well... I've, uh, well uh, I don't see the need. Yeah. I don't see the need at all. Um, gives away so much counterplay. Yeah. Uh, hooks with an O and an I as well mm -hmm. as the S, so creates a big bingo line. Um, he had a perfectly good X play that didn't give away counterplay, uh, other than the re-parallel. Um, scored much more. Although it's worth saying, as people are pointing out, there are multiple X setups here. There's the uh, Ox slash X something to the left, there's the I in Capitan, there's the A at the very bottom as well, so there's actually a number of scoring options next turn. But so what? Yeah. I mean, he only scored, yeah. he only scored tw what, 28 for that move, which is yeah. less less than an average score, right? Um, With that rack, certainly. And he, he increases Nigel's score. I, he had a perfectly good X play, so why, why, why would he set an X play up? Mm -hmm. It looks like he has the possibility of getting Fox with that I and Capitan next turn, assuming it's uh, not taken. So, but it looks like, uh, yeah, as I thought, uh, Nigel is uh, taking out that spot with something like Heh. Counterplays be damned. Nigel is worried about it. I almost think... I almost think the X is virtually the only possible tile in the leave after Capitan. Mm. Um, I expect Nigel Range found that without any difficulty at all. Well, there's Captain to play, if not Capitan. So right. He's got to see yeah, it yeah, or yeah. something like that. No, precisely. Um, Craig Beavers has just an X-ray in that newly set up spot. Orlet has said Frey or something similar. Well, it certainly has complicated the game, that, that play of Mark's. Um, scoring options all over the left and bottom part of the board, plus a brand new bingo line, in addition to the one uh, on row 2 and row 4, and on row 15 across to that N. So, uh, with Blank in the pool, still very possible that bingos will get played here. Uh, the pool is a bit weird though. There are no S's. Uh, there's a Q. There are six I's um, on the scene to mark. And as Craig Beavers has said, uh, F is not so bad to hold on to with the possibility of getting frizz up there potentially. Mm, indeed. I think X ray looks. And for R's, yeah, solid, X ray is pretty good. Solid play. Yeah, DFOT. Could use the R really, but um, as you say, a big chance of drawing it. However, X ray is one of the newer words as well, so it's possible he misses it. Capitano and 40. Keeping the X for another turn. I think that's defensible. Yeah. Um, you know, it re reduces N N Nigel's. Uh, scoring plays a bit, but um, it feels like Mark's scrambling around a bit to, uh, mm. to keep in the game unnecessarily. I think he was in a much more controlled position after Panax, and personally I would have preferred to be playing that that one. Um, this is all very unpredictable at the moment, hugely dependent on what tiles both players pull out of the bag. Mm. Um, playing for variance. We just, don't know what scoring, <laughs> we just don't know what scoring lines will be available, one, two, three, play from now. Mm. Uh, although Mark's nowhere near a bingo, this is not too bad a rack, you know, he's likely to be able to get uh, quite decent scores out of the board. You know, 
if Admix goes anywhere. Well, it goes down the bottom row, but uh, maybe nowhere else. Nigel, a bit unfortunate to have no scoring power here. Um, plenty of tiles in, on the board he could have drawn mm. to give himself an easy 35 or so, and instead uh, he's got to play from slight deficit without many uh, points, and he's just gone for pure score by the looks of it. Interesting. Rail is keeping OU. Rail is keeping OU. What do you guys think of that play? Uh, I'm, my instinct is that it, 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 he's not too worried about the OU leave because he thinks it's a board for scoring points and uh, those are, well, the O especially is an OK scoring valve. However, uh, the A is really the, the scoring valve that also matches the opportunities on the board the best because of that hook onto HI. Um, so I think uh, Nigel's kind of hoping to full, pull, pull some of the uh, good tiles out of the bag with that 5 over there mm. as well as scoring what he could and uh, that might tell you that he thinks his winning chances in this position are not all that great it's a riskier kind of play for the future than Nigel usually likes to make yeah and I, I don't know maybe uh, the fact that I'm saying this is actually a vindication of Mark's Capitan play uh, I think that would be the Play so far in the game to take away and spend a lot of time looking at to uh, get, get an education about the middle game strategy. It's one for high variance for sure uh, versus something like Panax. Mark could play actually, Mark, you know, from uh, D12 to score some here and still keep K as one possible scoring option. And of course I'm reminded uh, by Nigel's pickup that the Q was unseen to him and... Uh, oh, quiz is there. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He had to, uh, what, five unseen eyes and an mm -hmm. unseen Q and held a U. He held O U. So suddenly Rails, for the Q. Suddenly wow. Rails makes uh, a whole lot more sense when you realize that. Wow, that's, uh, gotta appreciate that. Yeah. Nigel's ability to hold all, all possible um, board developments and options in memory is, uh, really kind of amazing. That, that Z in most positions would be uh, leaping out to it. But because of all the other options on the board, the 15 row, the A column, and the bingo lines, uh, we'd sort of stopped talking about that apart from the suggestion yeah. of Frizz. But Nigel, he doesn't forget about it. Mark is down to under a minute and a half already. Oh no. Which is the worst. Ouch. He's going to be feeling the pressure big time. This is a very unclear position. Um, he needs to play something though. Add mix is the default play, and I see no reason not to make it. He's got to be worried about what Nigel might be holding. And, and the best thing Nigel could do is play quiz in like 10 seconds after this and force more time pressure. Which I'm sure will happen. And the, the game is very much uh, going to turn on what these two guys pull out of the bag after these, this exchange of admix and quiz. I'm sure Nigel's going to make this play very fast. Forty-two points down, and he's going to score sixty-six. Got twenty-four points, and leave seven in the bag, which is another headache for Mark because if he happens to have a bingo, he's got to be worried about emptying the bag with it. Yeah, that's dependent a bit on the pool as well. If Mark doesn't get the blank, uh, this is a very very stressful position for him to play with virtually no time. great interest to see what Mark Nyman has got to work with. He kept an A, that's good because the A column. Mm -hmm. So a kind of average rack, no blank, and that uh, I think tips the balance pretty heavily in favour of Nigel. From, uh, if, if you're thinking from Mark's point of view, he won't think of himself as a favourite um, without having pulled the blank. Yeah, Chris hasn't been committed. Nigel hasn't pulled it either, but he has pulled Oregano. Yeah, 
left smoke and it plays then Mark is very unlikely to take that line I'm not sure why Quiz hasn't been uh, committed there we go that's better so things look bleak for Mark right now probably uh, played Lark or something similar Without knowing it, he's taken away the only chance he had to counter the go. So, oh, unless row four works out for him, uh, he's going to need the blank and a bingo. There is... Okay, he's drawn the blank. He's drawn the blank. So, in fact, we need to take a step back. Um, Nigel has Oregano, but he may not play it, precisely because of the type of rack that Mark Nyman's got. He can counter with ge Geolatry, and that'll be a win yeah. for Mark. So Nigel now has to think. We may see him not like the bingo, given the unseen pool. And One Oregon second, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And Oregano... Well, we need to do maths here. With the 10 point time penalty, the scores are level. Yeah. Geolatry should still be a win, given the turnaround. Will it be? Um, I'm not sure actually. Because it'll just be three tiles on Nigel's racks, so that's only six more points. You know what, it might be a one point win for Nigel. Just uh, doing the maths quickly. Mark needs to look elsewhere now, like, uh, to see if he can score anywhere better. Or, yep. Ooh, Nigel's played ooh, he leaving one in the bag. bag. And this is really fascinating. Because Mark has to play the bonus though. Geology still plays. Oh no, it doesn't, not in that same spot. But Mark can be on row two, so it's all happening very fast. And he needs to think fast. <laughs> He's already over now. Nigel's got two eyes. Oh. Wow. He's at D Nigel is there, but Nigel Nigel's, yeah, drawn to drawn to nothing basically. Um, Mark needs to play something now. Hurry. <laughs> <laughs> Any bingo on row two should be a win for Mark. No Alestra or something like this. Yeah, just play it, Mark. Just play it. Or what's he looking at? The other tile in the pool is a T. Astro. Okay. In all likelihood, that was a hundred percent win as well. I don't think there was a bingo with the E that started yeah. on row two. So. Wow. Amazingly, this is going to be a win for Mark. Mark. And I don't, uh, I was trying to calculate that very fast, but it seemed to me that with the time penalty taken into account, Nigel had a one point win by playing Oregano on the previous yeah. turn. Seemed like it. But maybe uh, there was, Nigel must have seen something possible that I, would have scored enough. I don't to win. know. Possibly there was a bingo on row 12 or row 13 that Nigel was worried about that could outdraw it. So, guys, if you had time to think about that, let us know in the chat. That looks like a possible missed opportunity from Nigel, um, given that Mark had only one second to make his final play. So lots of drama on table one in this round. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a win for Mark Nyman, Im improbably in my opinion. Yeah, could we uh, get feedback on uh, on the time delay here on our broadcast? It looks like based on your comments that uh, there is a bit of a delay. Um, could you type the word Nyman when you hear it, and let's see how long it takes for you to respond to that. So if you take um, the time situation off the table, then it's very clear why Nigel wouldn't play Oregano, right? There were lots and lots of counter bingos that could have beaten him. But with that extra 10 points, I think most of those players disappear. Mm. And it's a question of whether Nigel... Uh, well, I, I'm going to try and... Uh, talk to those guys about, talk to Nigel about that play. I don't know if he'll give me much information, but I'm very curious to know uh, what he was thinking there. And what he he'd saw something clearly what that would have won. Okay, so there's a variation in delay. Some people responded after uh, 15 seconds, some after 20, uh, and then Orlet saying it was this three second delay. Um, but you said that about a minute after I said Nyman, so that might be... Yeah, it sounds like we have a fair bit of delay between the video and the sound. Maybe we should try and between games. Anyway, this result is great for the tournament. Mark Nyman wins the game. Doesn't matter how you win him, as long as you win him. Yep. And uh, Mark has again pulled Nigel back from a one-game advantage over the field. Still a big spread lead, and I think we're going to be settling in for a string of games between these guys. Yep. So, buckle up.
more Nyman Richards to come. And uh, we'll be back uh, in about nine minutes for the next round. Until then, we will sign off and see you soon. Bye, guys.